we rely on the salmon. We live along the coast of the Cook Inlet, and for many years, people survive off the land. It means a lot to Tyonic. It's our lifestyle, our survival. Everyone from Tyonix, the Nanam Athabascans, we're called Tabona, which means beach people. We live on the coast of the beach. Salmon provide not only food for the community members in Tyonic, but they also drive the economy there. Uh, our mission is really that subsistence is our agriculture, and so we really advocate for the wise use of natural resources. Because there's impediment to fish passage currently, conservation, it's a way to balance the needs of our species, of humanity, which has a massive impact on our natural world. We've been fishing here our whole lives. Yeah, it has changed a lot from when I was younger. It's culture, it's family, it's a way of life. We lose salmon, we lose a huge piece of that. And none of us want to see that happen. Oh, when we were growing up here, it's way different. I remember having to cut and put away 30, 40, 50 fish at a time. Now we're happy if we get 15. The importance of the project is it's helping feed our community. It's helping us sustain our lifestyle that we've had for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. The fish would just hit our net, just hit it. And now when I set my net, I'm waiting and waiting, waiting for a fish, any fish to hit my net. I feel like that if we didn't have salmon, I think Tyonic would have hardship. Not only that, it would affect our ecosystem. Not only us, but what we rely on. You know, we rely on the moose, the mammals, the birds, the plant life. If we rely on our fish, and so, yeah, it affects everybody. The Denaina culture is built largely on salmon and specifically king salmon as part of its cultural heritage. Uh, this is the food that is uh, fished for. This is the food that gets them through the very rigorous winters here in Alaska. You know, it's, it's part of the economy and the local culture. Ah, got one more. I, I just like eating it. <laughs> Fish passage became a high priority pretty immediately because it was something we could actually achieve in our lifetime is to work down the coast on these roads that were built, pick one at a time and, um, and open up habitat um, for all five species of salmon. The culvert right where we're standing, it was just a six foot culvert. The creek had been moved in the 1970s and so it was creating a real whitewater situation and it was flooding out not only here, but flooding out on that part of the road over there salmon weren't able to get through, and so it was a hazard, hazard for salmon, hazard for people. There's low water levels, they look like these little creeks, but then when there's a big rain event, these turn into big rivers, and they need, they need a lot of connectivity to a larger uh, landscape. 
So for this project, we are removing an undersized culvert and we're replacing it with the arch pipe culvert with a stream channel in the bottom that allows salmon to easily pass through so they can make it to their spawning grounds. We're really just trying to get the fish to be able to get back into their normal habitat and kind of make these, uh, like the human intervention, not be a negative impact to the fish habitat. Opening this at the inlet is really important because a lot of the times we think of these larger streams and rivers as really important for salmon, and they are, but also access to upper habitat and those smaller tributaries is really important for spawning and juvenile rearing in the years that they spend in the freshwater system. Uh, obviously, in the scope of the project, it's not uh, just to install the culvert, but to install the culvert and return the surrounding areas to its natural uh, setting. The earthwork that was involved in order to deliver this project was immense, so that's why it's uh, so significant. It was essential that we cleared a very large area. Uh, many acres of, uh, of area were cleared of trees and brush just to be able to allow the work to start. So what we have now is the biggest fish passage culvert installment in Alaska. It is 45 and a half feet wide, 22 and a half feet tall. And I loved the theme of, oh my gosh, we kind of were crazy to think that we could accomplish this. And we did, and it's just incredibly satisfying. And so this is an example of where we've gone to the situation and put in an appropriately sized, appropriately placed um, culvert. It's the 13th one that we have done so far. And again, as someone said, we've opened 600 lake acres of salmon habitat, over 50 miles of salmon habitat in the streams here. And we are going to keep going. Basically, we've rebuilt the stream within the culvert instead of trying to fit the stream into a straw. It's an engineered stream bank, and basically from the, the existing creek will traverse into the new creek, and it'll run in that new configuration probably for 100 years or so. And today we cut into the bank to allow the stream to go into the new channel and through the new culvert. TT City has always prided ourselves as a team, both our, our internal team and our partners, and this was just such a wonderful example of that coming together, and so it was kind of a ceremonious day today. I am not always a very emotional person, but I did feel myself getting a little bit emotional today, uh, just thinking of the fact that it was not only accomplished, but the fact that there were so many partners was a very emotional moment for me. And I think there's a little bit of relief too that we've got one more done. It just feels so much more meaningful when you're working with people on their own priorities. And then you get to a point like today where you get to rewater into that new channel. There was that first kind of initial flow of water that started moving, just kind of watching that energy start to fill a new and better space. Well, what you saw here today is, um, again, the largest culvert in the state of Alaska for fish passage. Um, it was the culmination of, you know, 10 years of planning, uh, several years of contact work, and a very busy uh, summer since the snow breakup uh, here in 2024. 
just an awesome effort by a group of companies, agencies, support factions to deliver this project. And as you can see today, uh, what a fantastic result. Uh, this one specifically really was the uh, merging of federal agencies, state agencies, the landowner, Tionic Native Corporation, the sponsor and host, the Native Village of Tionic, and of course the Tionic Tribal Conservation District, which uh, organized and orchestrated the entire project. From my perspective, were to say anything, it would be that we couldn't have done anything this large without all of the partnerships, without the years and years of dedication of agency partners meeting every two weeks together. I mean, that is a lot of dedication to a single project in the state. This um, completion ceremony today of a massive project that spans a decades-long and multi-agency effort to remove all barriers in the Tionic Creek watershed. And it opens a total of 65 miles of habitat. For us at NRCS, we're an agricultural agency. NRCS is here, we're helping people help the land. And that's what I think happened here, and it couldn't have been done alone. This has been a group project, and I just want to say thank you for letting us participate in this and be a partner in this, in this project. Because this has been a chance for us to show how important fish passage is, and how important fish and subsistence is in Alaska. I mean, all the culverts and all, we put in quite a few culverts, and they're all fish friendly, they got ground they could swim through, and they really improved the fish. You could really notice the fish coming through it. As we said, thank you all. Thank you all so very much for what you've done, for what you've helped us do. Partnerships are essential to the work that we do, whether we're needing to bring in technical expertise or bringing in funders, and no one organization or, or one agency can have all the funding that we need. We are sharing visions about what needs to happen here, and so we should be working together to make those, to make those happen. For the fish to swim through, the yeah. So, it's, so they're more healthy, and so they could uh, get baby fish. Yeah. yeah. That's why we have these, the fishies that we make. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we've got some alders we'd like to plant today, but again, just find the the top root that maybe is right here, and just bury it right there, and you'll be good. They just need to be spread out. Uh, they're alders, they're pretty tough, but if you put them in the ground, that would be awesome. Let's green up this area. Woo! If we're able to you know, reestablish things the way that they historically were, uh, it allows these uh, ecosystems to function uh, like they're supposed to. Without this natural habitat and some of these passages, the fish really don't know where to go and they can end up in areas that's not really uh, going to promote long-term uh, sustainability. So to see everybody with a vested interest show up to celebrate the, the delivery of this project was really special and for many of the people that have lived this day in and day out, it was actually an emotional event. It's such a celebration of so many wonderful people that I care so dearly about. Partnership is, is really the only way we achieve any of these projects. We go find the people that know how to get the work done, coordinate it, and, and do the job. For the first time in years, probably since I was a kid, they found evidence of king salmon in there due to the culvert project here in Tionic. Now you have elders saying that they're seeing larger fish swim up that they haven't seen before. So fish are already finding this new habitat. It just, that's like an un unspeakable emotion. I, there were so many years that nobody thought we could accomplish a project this large. It's the 13th one that we have done and we're ready to move on to opening up even more. It's 
really great to, you know, have skilled people to work with you. It really makes stuff go a lot smoother. Our supporters, our funders, just working with them helps feed our people in not only our tribe, but other tribes as well. Just everything is such a great commitment to our tribe.